in this session of differential calculus we will discuss gradient divergence and curve first ordinary derivatives a question suppose we have a function of one variable f of x what does the derivative d of by dx do for us answer it tells us how rapidly the function fx varies when we change the argument x by a tiny amount dx df is equal to df by dx of dx which is equation 1 in words if we change x by an amount dx then f changes by an amount df the derivative is pro the proportionality factor for example in this figure the function varies slowly with x and the derivative is correspondingly small in this figure f increases rapidly with x and the derivative is large as you move away from x is equal to 0 so what is the geometrical interpretation the derivative df by dx is the slope of the graph f versus x gradient suppose now that we have a function of three variables say the temperature t x y z means t dependent on x y and z in a room so the temperature in a room is considered starting out at one corner let us set up an axis system then for each point x y z in the room t gives the temperature at that spot we want to generalize the notion of derivative to functions like t which depends not on one but three variables now a derivative is supposed to tell us how fast the function varies if we move a little distance but this time the situation is more complicated because it depends on what direction we move if you go straight up the temperature will probably increase fairly rapidly but if we move horizontally it may change it may not change at all in fact the question how fast does t vary has an infinite number of answers one for each direction we might choose to explore fortunately the problem is not as bad as it looks a theorem on partial derivatives states that dt is equal to dou t by dou x dx plus dou t by dou y dy plus dou t by dou z dz or equation 2. This equation tells us how t changes when we alter all three variables by the infinitesimal amounts dx dy dz. Notice that we do not require an infinite number of derivatives three will suffice. The partial derivatives along each of the three coordinates. Equation 2 is a reminiscent of a dot product dt is equal to dou t by dou x plus dou t by dou y plus dou t by dou z dot dx plus dy plus dz. Where x cap, y cap, z cap are the unit vectors in the three directions along positive x, y and z axis respectively. This can be written as del t dot dl which is equation 3 where del t is equal to dou t by dou x plus dou t by dou y plus dou t by dou z where x cap, y cap and z cap are the unit vectors as we said. This del t is a gradient of t del t is a vector quantity with three components it is the generalized derivative we have been looking for equation 3 is a three-dimensional version of equation 1 what is the geometrical interpretation of the gradient like any vector the gradient has magnitude and direction to determine its geometrical meaning let's rewrite the dot product in equation 3 in abstract form dt is equal to del t dot dl is equal to 
the magnitude of del t multiplied by the magnitude of dl multiplied by cos theta where theta is the angle between del t and dl. Now if we fix the magnitude dl and search around in various directions that is vary theta the maximum change in t the temperature which we stated initially evidently occurs when theta is equal to 0 that is for when cos theta equal to 1. That is for a fixed distance dl dt is greatest when l move in the same direction as delta t or del t. Thus the gradient del t points in the direction of maximum increase of the function t. Once again the gradient del t points in the direction of maximum increase of the function t. Moreover the magnitude del t gives a slope along this maximal direction. So by slope we mean the rate of increase. Imagine you are standing on a hillside and you are looking all around and find the direction of the steepest ascent. That is the direction of the gradient. Now measure the slope in that direction. That is the magnitude of the gradient. Here the function we are talking about is height of the hill and the coordinates it depends on our positions like latitude, longitude, etc. Say. This function depends on only two variables, not three. But the geometrical meaning of the gradient is easier to grasp in two dimensions. Notice from equation 5 that the direction of maximum descent is opposite to the direction of maximum ascent, while at right angles, that is when theta is equal to 90 degree, the slope is 0. That is, uh, the gradient is perpendicular to the contour lines. You can conceive of surfaces that do not have these properties, but they always have kinks in them and correspond to non-differentiable functions. What would it mean for the gradient to vanish if del t is equal to 0 at x, y, z, then dt is equal to 0 for small displacements about the point x, y, z. This is then a stationary point of the function t. It could be a maximum that is a summit, a minimum, a valley, a saddle, means a saddle point which is a pass or a shoulder. This is analogous to the situation for functions of one variable where a vanishing derivative signals a maximum, a minimum or an inflection. In particular, if you want to locate the extreme of a function of three variable, three, uh, set its gradient equal to zero. The del operator, the gradient has uh, the formal appearance of a vector del multiplying a scalar t. Del t is equal to dou by dou x x cap plus dou by dou y y cap plus dou by dou z z cap times t, where x cap, y cap and z cap are the unit vectors in positive x, y, and z directions. Here, uh, the unit vectors is written to the left so as not to conf confuse with the dou x cap by dou x and so on, which would be zero since x cap is a constant. Here, del is equal to dou by dou x, x cap plus dou by dou by y cap plus dou by dou z, z cap. Of course, del is not a vector in the usual sense. Indeed, it is without specific meaning until we provide it with a function to act upon. Furthermore, it does not multiply t. Rather, it, it is an instruction to differentiate what follows. To be precise, then we should say that del is a vector operator that acts upon t, not a vector that multiplies t. With this qualification though, del mimics the behavior of an ordinary vector in virtually every way. Almost anything that can be done with other vectors can also be done with del. If we merely translate multiply by act upon, so by all means take the vector appearance of del seriously. It is a marvelous piece of notational simplification as you will appreciate if you ever 
considered Maxwell's original work on electromagnetism written without the benefit of Dell. Now, an ordinary vector E can multiply in three ways, where a scalar is multiplied as E times A, multiply another vector B via the dot product A dot B, and multiply another vector via the cross product A cross B. Correspondingly, there are three ways the operator del can act on a scalar function t as del t, which is known as the gradient, on a vector function v via the dot product del dot v, which is known as the divergence, on a vector function v via the cross product, that is a del cross v, known as the curl. We have already discussed the gradient, now we will discuss from the definition of del, we construct the divergence. Del dot v is equal to dou by dou x x cap plus dou by dou y y cap plus dou by dou z z cap dot v x x cap plus v y y cap plus v z z cap, which can be written as dou v x by x plus dou v y by dou y plus dou v z by dou z. Observe that the divergence of vector function v is itself a scalar, del dot v. You can't have the divergence of a scalar, that is meaningless. Now, the geometrical interpretation of divergence. The name divergence is well chosen for del dot v is a measure of how much the vector v spreads out, that is it diverges from the point in question. For example, the vector function A has large positive divergence. If the arrows are pointed in, it would be have negative di uh, divergence. The function figure B has zero divergence and that in the figure C has a positive divergence again. Please understand that V here is a function that's a different vector associated with every point in space. In diagrams, of course, we can only draw the arrows at a few representative locations. You can imagine that you are standing at the edge of a pond and you can sprinkle some sawdust or pine needles on the surface. If the material spreads out, then you dropped it at a point of positive divergence. If it collects together, you dropped it at a point of negative divergence. The vector function v in this model is the velocity of water. This is a two-dimensional example, but it helps gives one feel for what the divergence means. A point of positive divergence is a source or a faucet. Once again, a point of positive divergence is a source or faucet whereas a point of negative divergence is a sink or drain. The curl. From the definition of del, we construct the curl. Del cross v is uh, given by determinant x cap, y cap, z cap. Notice that the curl of a vector function v is like any cross product a vector. You cannot have the curl of a scalar that is meaningless. Now, the geometrical interpretation of curl. The name curl is also well chosen for del cross v is a measure of how much the vector v curls around the point in question. There are three functions in this figure which are, we had represented in the case of divergence all have zero curl as you can check yourself. Whereas the functions in this two figures have a substantial curl pointing in the z direction as a as a natural right hand rule. So curl is as you represent in cross product of two vectors. Now imagine again, yes, once again we are imagining the same situation. Imagine that you are standing at the edge of a point and you are floating a paddle wheel. You can easily make one like uh, by uh, having a cork with toothpicks pointing out radially. Now, 
if the placed paddle wheel starts to rotate then you place it in at a point of non zero curve a whirlpool would be a region of large curve as expected the curls point in the positive z direction incidentally they both have zero divergence as you might guess from the pictures nothing is spreading out it just curls around the second derivative is the gradient the divergence and the curl are only first derivatives we can make with del by applying del twice we can construct five species of second derivatives the gradient del t is a vector so we can take the divergence and curl of it so we have divergence of gradient del dot del t curl of the gradient del cross del t the divergence del dot v is a scalar all we can do is take its gradient that is the gradient of the divergence the curl del cross v is a vector so we can take its divergence and curl the divergence of curl is del dot del cross v and the curl of curl is del cross del cross v this exhausts the possibilities now if we look one by one del dot del t can be expanded and written as dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square this object which we write del square t for short is called the laplacian of t now notice that the laplacian of a scalar t is a scalar itself occasionally we shall speak of the laplacian of a vector del square v by this we mean that a vector quantity whose x component is the laplacian of vx vy and so on this is a nothing more than a convenient extension of the meaning of del square now the curl of a gradient is always zero uh del of del dot v for some is a not of much physical uh, application uh, physics and allied engineering areas so we call it as the gradient of divergence itself and there is no specific name given to it and the fourth one the divergence of a curl like the curl of a gradient is always zero as you can uh, check from the definition of del that del cross del cross v is equal to del of del dot v minus del square v minus del square yeah i forgot to put a bracket so the curl of curl gives nothing new the first term is just a number and the second term is the laplacian of a vector in fact this equation is uh, often used to define the laplacian of a vector which makes specific reference to cartesian coordinates uh, we can say that there are just two kinds of second derivatives the laplacian which is of fundamental importance and the gradient of divergence which we seldom encounter in physical situations we could uh, go through a similar ritual to work out third derivatives but fortunately the second derivatives will suffice for practically all physical applications a final word on vector differential calculus it all flows from the operator del and from taking seriously it's a vector character even if you remembered only the definition of del you should be able in principle to reconstruct the remaining